This photo is taken around the year 1900 in a building constructed by the man on the chair, Nikola Tesla. And of course, he wants, when that day comes, to be remembered as the genius and the inventor he is. But as this photo is taken, he grows more and more into becoming the cliché he never wanted to be. That of the mad scientist. If things had turned out just a bit differently, he could have been here. At the 1927 Solvay Conference, which is best remembered for this photo. Never before has the average IQ been as high in a single photograph. Schröödinger, Niels Bohr, Marie Curie, they are all here. And while many of those gathered, like Albert Einstein, may be known as eccentric, perhaps confused, and even if they soon are going to say the weirdest things about the origin of the universe and eternities, they will all behave in a way that is expected. Nikola Tesla wants to exceed all expectations. So he's here on the Colorado Prairie, inside his building. His dream is to send electricity wirelessly around the globe. From masts like this one on the roof, he wants the energy to flow through the air to a receiver. He has already succeeded on a smaller scale. Now he is going to turn the power up. And that sure may sound like the idea of a mad scientist. But is it? In 1856, Nikola Tesla was born in Croatia, Europe. At 14, Nikola leaves home to study. At 26, he is an engineer in Paris, gets his first patent at 28, and then moves to New York City and helps Thomas Edison electrify America. But Tesla never adjusts to the corporate world. And when he sits here, it's been a long time since he and Edison parted as enemies. And Tesla will later be remembered as half a visionary genius and half a mad scientist, with photos like this one confirming it. Doesn't matter that the photo is a double exposure, two images. The first one of the lightning in the air, the second one with Tesla on the chair. Anything else would of course have been real madness. But the image will stick on Tesla's legacy, especially as he never succeeds with his wireless power and he will live out his last years sitting much like this, but on the park bench in Manhattan, poor as a church mouse, feeding the pigeons. This photo is taken in 1990, on February 14th, Valentine's Day. And what is so great with this photo is that we hardly see anything at all. The person who asked for it to be taken believed that this photo, like no other image, has the power to describe the human condition and life. Here he is, Carl Sagan, born 1934 in Brooklyn, dead 1996 in Seattle, and during his life, the most important person on the planet when it came to describing our place in the universe. He works at NASA. His brain is sharp as a razor, but he speaks softly and wise. He's almost obsessed to answer the question, are we alone? Or are there other beings on other planets who also can see the stars and feel wonder and awe? 
In the space probe Voyager, he will pack the most valuable information an alien might need to be able to understand the humans, to be able to reach us. Sagan wants contact, and it's like he's reaching out into space. On the space probe Voyager, into the darkness, he packs the sound of the earth. Sounds of animals, Beethoven, Azerbaijani folk music, the sound of waves and human footsteps. Sagan will see his probe take off and travel for years, but then, beyond Neptune, he gets a sudden idea. To turn it, to let it take one last look back at the earth. Voyager sees this, and Sagan will name the photo the pale blue dot. The lines across the image come from sun rays from the side, but up there, a bit to the right, in a small dot, almost completely white, just lightly blue, our planet. And now one of the probe's missions to make others able to see us is now reversed. Now we see ourselves. In fragments, Sagan writes, Look at that dot. That's here. That's home. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know. Every saint and sinner on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals so that they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of that dot. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits. It underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we ever known. Sagan hoped that anyone who saw this image would experience the same epiphany as him. To clearly see the only sane thing that we have to do better. But if that really happens for everyone who sees this image has of course to be determined each time the image is shown. Like now, when you see it. Oh. 